So here I'm going to talk about different types of matrices, in particular ones that have names. So we'll start with triangular matrices. An upper triangular matrix is a square matrix in which all the entries below the main diagonal are zero. So here are two examples. You can see here's the main diagonal, and everything below it is zero. So we have this upper triangle. Same thing with this one. Everything below the diagonal is zero. In this second one, you can see there's elements on the diagonal and above the diagonal that are also zero, and that's fine, as long as everything underneath this main diagonal is a zero. Lower triangular matrices are square matrices in which the entries above the main diagonal are zero. It's kind of the opposite of the upper triangular. Now we have this lower triangle. Once again, elements on the main diagonal or below it are okay to be zero, but everything above it must be a zero. A matrix that's both upper and lower tri triangular is known as a diagonal matrix. And this comes from the fact that the only thing that's not a zero are things that are on the diagonal. Once again, things on the diagonal can be a zero, but if it's not on the diagonal, it must be a zero. Idempotent matrices are any matrix such that a squared is equal to a. So if you think about real numbers, there are two real idempotent numbers. One squared is one, and zero squared is one, or is zero. There are lots of idempotent matrices though. The identity squared is still equal to the identity, so that is idempotent. And here's another idempotent here. And you can check this, two, one, minus two, minus one, times itself. And you get four minus two, minus four, plus two, two minus one, and minus two plus one. So we still got back to where we started. A matrix is involutive if a squared is equal to the identity. So once again, we have two involutive numbers. One squared is one, and negative one squared is one. And here are two involutive matrices. Once again, the identity squared is equal to itself, so it's definitely involutive. And here's another one. And once again, you can check this. So we have this matrix times itself. We get zero plus one negative one, or zero plus zero, zero plus zero, and one plus zero. So we got the identity back. A matrix is considered symmetric if A is equal to A transpose. So both of these matrices are symmetric. It's important to note with symmetric matrices that anything on the main diagonal can be whatever you want it to be. Then above and below should be the same. So I have this four and another four, negative seven, negative seven, one, one. Same thing here. The main diagonal can be anything and above and below the main diagonal should be the same. A matrix is skew symmetric if A is equal to minus A transpose. So here are two skew symmetric matrices. And you'll see if I look above and below this main diagonal, the only thing that's different should be a sign change. 4 and negative 4, negative 7 and positive 7, 1 and negative 1. Same thing here, 3 minus 3, 2 minus 2, and minus 5 and 5. You'll notice on both of these the main diagonal is a 0, and it's always going to be that way on skew symmetric matrices. When you take the transpose of a matrix, these diagonal elements do not change. So the diagonal must be something that's equal to its own negative. And the only thing that satisfies that is zero. Our last type of matrix is orthogonal. So for orthogonal matrices, 
A times A transpose is equal to A transpose A, which is equal to the identity. So basically, with these matrices, A transpose is the same thing as A inverse. So orthogonal matrices can be tricky to find, and as we progress in the class, we'll figure out how to determine these a little bit better.